Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I have another message for you, which I hope is going to absolutely hit you in the heart today. Um, because today I really want to bring to you an amazing analogy, uh, something that I do my very, very best to live by. And I've really started, um, yeah, you, using this as a way of really making sure that I am living to my highest potential in relationships. And in particular, we're going to focus on intimate relationship. And um, I've just had a few days of um, attending a course with my new partner, uh, and I'm really grateful for it. I'm going to share a little bit about um, that experience with you guys, um, but I'm really going to be tapping into uh, this analogy that I want to share with you uh, so that it makes what I'm talking about and really, you know, the underlying theme of what we're going to be discussing today uh, really kind of applicable, right? So you can really take it into uh, any of your relationships, but like I said, this is kind of more focused on the intimate relationship um, aspect, but I'd love to hear from you guys as per usual. So make sure you are dropping me a comment. Let me know where in the world you're tuning in from. If this happens to be a valuable message for you guys, then please do share it um, with anybody that you feel could benefit um, from it so we can definitely co-create an amazing space together here. Um, but today I'm going to be talking about healing and the correlation with healing and wounding and in particular our intimate relationships. So if you've ever been in an intimate relationship, if you're currently in an intimate relationship, or maybe you want to be in an intimate relationship in your future, then this one's going to be really um really a powerful one to set you up to win. Now, as you guys know, who've been following me for a little while, you know, I've had a bit of experience in the realm of intimate relationships so far in my life. And though some of you may or may not know that I have recently entered into a new relationship uh, in a bit of an unconventional way. And it's kind of crazy and weird, I know. Um, but, you know, it's kind of feeling a lot more normal now that I've been in it um, for a few months now. But basically why it's unconventional is the fact that we haven't actually met in person. Oh my God, it sounds so crazy and weird when I talk into it. But um, we haven't actually met in person. He lives in America. I live here in Australia. And because of COVID, we've been pretty isolated in terms of, um, you know, we don't have the capacity to travel. There's a travel restriction and ban here in Australia. Um, not allowed to leave the country, right? And so, and he wouldn't be allowed to come in. So basically, we have been building and establishing a relationship um, via Zoom, really. And, uh, and so what we actually did um, over the weekend was we actually attended a relationship course together for couples. It was all about uh, practicing the skills of conflict resolution um, and all sorts of beautiful stuff, right? And so, um, you know, it was interesting even just communicating and connecting with a lot of the people in that environment who were attending with their partners, um, you know, in the physical presence, um, you know, and um, nobody quite like us who hadn't actually met. But what we were tr trying to do and the reason why we had chosen to do something like that was to set an amazing foundation uh, for our relationship in the beginning stages. Now, over my time in relationship, what I have experienced, and I'm sure you guys might be able to resonate with this one as well, is that it's such an easy place to be feel wounded and to wound others, even unintentionally, right? And and basically, it ends up being at the demise of the individuals, right? We end up leaving relationship more wounded than we were when we first met. And what my um, vision for relationship is, is that no, 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 I'm going to do the work on me as best I possibly can at building my level of awareness and noticing what my wounds are and doing the work to actually heal those wounds, right? So that I'm not going to project them into the relationship. Because at the end of the day, if you don't deal with your wounding from your past, 
your intimate relationship and your intimate partner is going to have to deal with it in some degree, right? And so basically today I want to talk to you guys and share an analogy that I um, hope resonates with you guys, um, that basically it's talking into the fact that your relationship is a place for healing wounds, not collecting them. And when we go into intimate relationship in particular, very unconsciously, right? And we get into the stages of infatuation and we, you know, it's so exciting. And then, you know, the cracks start to appear and then we go through the necessary stages of disillusionment when this perfect individual starts to be more of a normal individual, right? And, um, and basically that's when our expectations haven't been met, right? And that's at the point where we enter these stages of challenge. And we're at this point where we can either be really affected and wounded and project at this person that they need to be different and, um, you know, project all of our pain and hurt their direction and, and them to us. And we can create all this wounding and then we try and recover from that. And, you know, things might not ever get back to the way that they were and all this stuff that can happen with two really beautifully well-intentioned individuals who just want to be loved and who want to love, right? And we, but why do we get so wounded? Why do we get so projective? Why do we get so disappointed? Why do we create so much separation when we ultimately want love? And basically, it all stems from our wounding from the past, past experiences um, as ch children, from caregivers, from people around us, from um, different instances where we might have been treated certain ways by, um, you know, by peers or by a caregiver or whatever, right? Um, and basically, that starts in childhood and then throughout our adolescence and into our adult life, we're still picking up all these different experiences experiences that are either wounding us or, or if we're lucky, healing us, right? But the problem is, is that you tend to need to be consciously working on healing yourself. It doesn't usually just happen. Some of us are lucky at different times and different experiences, but majority of the time we're quite unconscious and we keep picking up more wounds or prodding our current wounds, all right? And so Basically, if we can take this different perspective, like this is what I'm doing in this brand new relationship. I actually feel, although I kind of was complaining a little bit that we haven't actually met in person just yet, I'm actually very grateful for this time that we get to actually set a really amazing foundation of trust and take things super slow, right? And basically uh, set it up to win in terms of I start to notice what triggers me? And then I have a lot of space and time for myself to go, you know what? I'm going to take responsibility for this trigger, for this wounding. I'm going to see what this is pointing me to in terms of my own healing journey. And then basically I'm going to do that work because I'm either going to do that work now and bring to my relationship an environment that heals wounds, right? Or I'm going to not do the work and then I'm just going to wing it and just expect uh, this other person to heal all my wounds for me or make me feel lovable or whatever. And then what's going to happen is they're an imperfect human being dealing with their own stuff, right? And basically, you know, most people come both sides with that expectation. And then all we do with those expectations is end up feeling really disappointed and we end up unintentionally, um, but almost uncontrollably wounding ourselves more and wounding the other, all right? To the point where it's hard, it's make, we make life hard for ourselves, right? To reconcile those differences. And so I'm really grateful for this time to be able to spend even more time going in myself and figuring out the triggers in the beginning stages of relationship to do that work and to really intentionally uh, utilize the vehicle of intimate relationship as a container to really heal wounds, not collect them. And the reason why I put a real emphasis on that is because I have a strong belief that when you create an incredible team in that intimate container, basically it becomes, you know, your launching pad for the rest of your life. 
right? It makes you feel when things are really amazing with somebody you feel has got your back and you've got theirs and you're an absolute team and you're there to uh, heal wounds rather than collect them and constantly grow together and realign and, you know, value one another and respect each other's differences and encourage each other to live in their highest values, then basically you go into the world a much more empowered, confident, uh, p fueled person, right? To achieve and create all the things that you're most inspired by on an individual level. And that's what I'm aiming for, right? Because I know in its potential and, uh, and I've experienced the opposite and I ain't going back to the opposite, right? I feel like I've learned those lessons time and time again to get to this point of realization to go, ah, really got to make way for this uh, relationship to be a container to heal wounds rather than collect them. Now, I promised you guys an analogy that I wanted to share with you that really works well for me, and I hope that it supports you as well. So this is how I think about when we have challenges in our intimate relationship. So you can picture the two of you, right? These wonderful human beings, you get to meet each other and it's all beautiful, it's all rainbows and puppy dogs, right? And, uh, and then basically over time, you start to get a bit closer and closer and then what happens is a challenge occurs. Now, I look at the challenges as we're just thinking we're all great, right? And everything's perfect. And then we bump up to upon each other. And what actually hits from me to you is actually a piece of armor. And we didn't even know that that piece of armor was there, right? It, we butted up against each other's armor. And you can picture us, now we've entered, we're on a battlefield, right? Our armor is just clunked together. And now we're at choice point. What a lot of people do because they're terrified and it becomes like a life and death situation on the battlefield, they keep they take a sword out, right? And then they're prodding each other's wounds, right? They're not healing wounds, they're on the battlefield collecting wounds. But the reason why this analogy is so powerful is because it gives you another option. Every time your pieces of armor are inevitably going to bump up against another person's, in this case, your intimate partner, you are at choice point. You could take out the sword, right? If you didn't have a strong sense of uh, valuing the relationship dynamic as this third entity that you guys are both invested in as a place that heals wounds rather than collects them. If you have that in place, you look at the armor that just bumped up and clunked up against theirs and you go, ah, I'm going to take responsibility for this. And you have an agreement, hopefully, with a person who shares that with you, that they're going to take care of their um, piece of armor as well. So you retreat from the battlefield and you go and do that work. Now, I have a bunch of different processes um, for you guys to practice. If you get to this stage, if you want to reach out to me, I'll definitely let you know in on those. But basically, you retreat off the battlefield, you take your piece of armor and you decide to take it off. You decide to analyze what does this piece of armor represent? What did I feel it was protecting me from? And just to know that the armor that you felt was protecting you is actually a block to love, right? And you're trying to get into your relationship the deepest you can go. So in that place of retreating from the battlefield, not by running away, but by consciously going, you know what? I want to get to a loving, centered, conscious place. And I refuse to collect wounds in this dynamic. I'm going to do my part over here to make sure that when we come back together, we're healing wounds, not collecting them. And basically, you go do that work, you get that awareness, and you get to a loving centered place. Again, I've got processes for that. But basically, then now steps in that place of courageous vulnerability. Definitely the most attractive quality from my perspective, any human being can have courageous vulnerability. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, it takes a lot of courage to come back to a battlefield that you retreated from when you clunked up against their armor without that piece of armor. You don't know if they've done the same. 
they could very well still have their armor on. They could have their sword out and now your armor free and open for them to shove their sword into your wound, right? And so basically it takes a lot of courageous vulnerability and a commitment to yourself that you want to be the quality of person who grows and is a leader of love, right? Not, you know, waiting for somebody else to go first and make it okay for you. So you're taking a bit of a gamble there, right? And you need the element of the gamble in order to establish deep lasting trust with anybody, right? If it's all easy, well, that was easy. But if there's a difficult situation, you get to have a create an opportunity for experience that, oh my gosh, I can so trust this person. They could have used my wounds against me, but they didn't. And basically you come back onto the battlefield, waving your white flag, right? With um, peace and hopefully they've done the same too, right? And basically from that place, you take that as an opportunity to establish deeper levels of trust, respect, openness, courageous vulnerability. You share the experience, you utilize it to heal that wound that was under that piece of armor that you didn't even know was there until it clunked up against theirs. And now what you're doing is you're establishing the greatest vehicle for growth any human being can hope to have. A quality intimate relationship where you have a shared commitment to a vision that's much bigger than just the two of you, that is a place, an environment that heals wounds rather than collects them and gives you the opportunity to find out where those pieces of armor are that are covering up those unconscious wounds that you get to fast track your success in clearing and healing and growing beyond because you've got a partner who's a teammate, who is there on the same journey, who is just as committed to growth and progression and using that vehicle of relationship for healing, right, rather than wounding as you and you get to do that together, right? So this is just an analogy that I like to think about every time there's an inevitable challenge or trigger that comes up because guaranteed they're going to go on and on and on throughout your life. But it's how you view them that makes the difference between you suffering and you expanding, okay? If you think that that's um, a painful experience that means everything needs to, you know, everything's bad if there's a trigger or a wound that comes up, then you're going to have a hard time about it, right? You're going to be in suffering because the challenges are inevitable. But if you take on this perspective and use this analogy that I'm sharing with you guys today, I guarantee you it will revolutionize your experience of intimate relationship. And a side note on this one, just have such a high standard in this realm that you refuse to settle for anything less. And particularly, I just want to send this message out to any of the beautiful women out there. I think this piece goes so missing, but if you are the feminine side of the relationship, that could be a man or a woman, but basically I believe through my own experience that it's the feminine that sets the standard of connection in our intimate relationships. And we need to set a high standard and value ourselves and see the potential and value another human being and not let them settle for anything less than they're capable of, right? That other beautiful human being. And masculine energy responds to challenge. They need a little bit of challenge, even though they might think they, they might not want it, right? I promise you. Um, so long as you're making them feel successful, you're giving them the solutions, it's such a beautiful dance that we get to do, right? That plays to these different powers that we have, right? We're all equal, but we get to play different roles and we have different elements to bring to the relationship dynamic uh, that really help to empower the other in a, in a unique way, all right? So just as a side note there. So that is my message for you guys. Um, so I definitely want to check in with you guys. Have you got any questions or comments or words of wisdom that you'd love to share or contribute to the conversation? I would absolutely love to hear with you, hear from you and check in with you right now. Uh, but let's check in. I've got Jeff in the house and Lee. I'm doing well. Hope you are as well, my friend. And So's here and Kanzo and Robert and uh, 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 Jugraj. I think Robert, uh, yeah, and another Robert. 
Oh no, same Robert. And uh, hello to you, Kanzo, and grateful that this is re resonating with you, uh, Robert, and grateful that it's resonating with you too, Lee. And Kanzo is from Nepal. Beautiful. And George and Alondro and Angela and John and Wael and Alondro are so beautiful, so mesmerizing, so smart. Thank you. Thank you so much for those kind words, my friend, and always grateful to see you join us live. And Abdul is here and Nicholas and Giannis and Judy, Kelly Mera, Giannis, good to see you my friend, and Jose is here and Victor and Valencia and Ismail and Dawn's in the house and Tina and Ma and Laura and Olivia. So good to see each and every one of you guys. I really hope today's message has hit home for you. If it has been of value, like I said, please do share it with any loved ones, particularly if you've got an intimate partner. I just feel like this analogy, the reason I wanted to share it with you is is because it's super valuable in my own life and um, and I feel like when we have an analogy that puts language to the challenges in our lives it can make it more palatable for us to actually address it because it's pretty fear inducing when we address our challenges but if we have an analogy you know a kind of framework to follow we can oftentimes be more empowered to actually do what's more conscious rather than re retreat into you know all of our reactivity so hope that that's a value to you and uh jay kashan you're so welcome my friend grateful that this was a value to you so remember my message is for each and every one of you guys to remember that your relationship is a place for healing wounds, not collecting them. All right, make that the purpose of the vehicle of your relationship. Uh, and also, my reminder every time we connect is to go out there and live authentically, love deeply, and contribute meaningfully and purposefully. And I want to thank each and every one of you guys for joining me live today. Hope this has been of value to each and every one of you. And I cannot wait to see you guys soon. Much love.